it was about Thanksgiving time of 2009, so she was five months old, and she started getting real bad upset stomachs, trouble going to the bathroom, real fussy all the time, and I kept taking her back to the pediatrician, telling them that I thought that something was not right, that she just wasn't comfortable. She had gone from sleeping 12 hours at night to waking up every hour, screaming, crying. She turned jaundice. And so we took her back to the pediatrician and they sort of went into panic mode. We went to Charlottesville the next day when they discovered that there was a tumor in her abdomen. She was diagnosed with neuroblastoma um, in, and it was December 14th of 2009. So the standard treatment was we started with initially eight rounds of chemotherapy and after each two rounds, Edie was scanned again. And it was um, after the 10 rounds that they were finally able to go in and just sort of chipping away at pieces of the tumor. It was a, a long process, a very long process. You know, the, the chemotherapy, the surgeries, it was kind of touch and go at the beginning. Uh, she went through 12 rounds of chemo, had four major surgeries, and after all that, we had found out the cancer had come back. Um, that's when we were introduced to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and Dr. Mazze. When I first met Edie, she had no hair. She had a feeding tube because she couldn't uh, eat using her mouth. She had developed an aversion to food. She was needing blood transfusions um, as a result of the chemotherapy that she'd gotten. We didn't know what other options were out there for us, and thankfully we had um, Dr. Mose who stepped in at that point and recommended that Edie have some additional testing done to see if they could get to the bottom of why this kept coming back in the same exact spot. It was a blood test to test for a gene called the ELK gene that um, they have traced back to neuroblastoma in children this young age. And um, Edie was given the blood test and her blood test did come back positive. We have been uh, focused on the rare families where neuroblastoma is inherited, knowing from other diseases like breast cancer that these, these families can teach us uh, about um, what drives the cancer. And in 2008, we made the discovery that these families all have abnormalities uh, in the DNA of this gene we now call ALK, ALK, which stands for anaplastic lymphoma kinase. It's a gene that when it's turned on, it allows the tumor to grow. And so fortunate for us, it allows us the opportunity to think of ways to turn it off. Dr. Mose has found uh, this link and a uh, medicine that uh, can help turn this elk gene off. They obviously, you know, felt that it was, it could be the answer for Edie. Then we, you know, took a leap of faith and said, let's try it. She did really well and surprisingly so, when we came to be scanned the beginning of November, the cancer was gone. So she was diagnosed cancer-free um, in November of 2011. So this has been the longest time that she has been cancer-free since she was diagnosed in December of 2009. And now here she is after six months of treatment on this drug and she has a full head of beautiful blonde hair. She's got a fantastic personality. We took her feeding tube out and um, she is just uh, a completely normal, healthy appearing toddler who's dancing and singing and causing lots of trouble. And it is very rewarding. It gives a lot of hope.